Tom DeLonge has already broke the guitar internet once with the reissue of his Fender Stratocaster. Can we do it one more time with the new Starcaster? That's a blink joke there. <laughs> So for any fan of Blink-182 and particularly their guitarist and singer Tom DeLonge, you will have no doubt been very, very excited, as I mentioned, when Tom and Fender re-released the iconic Stratocaster, the one pickup Seymour Duncan Invader loaded. Strat was, I think, probably the dream of most sort of millennials who grew up playing the guitar and were certainly a fan of Tom DeLonge anyway. That kind of stripped down Stratocaster, you know, only really like screamed punk rock to like tons and tons of folks. Certainly at my age anyway, I absolutely adored that guitar when I was a kid. But obviously Blink are back, people are out to see them. Tom's playing a new guitar though, that was the that was the biggest thing that certainly a lot of folk were saying. They'd seen him with the Strat obviously playing live, but for years and years and years Tom was playing a ES-335 one pickup loaded Gibson with that really cool uh, racing stripe just down the middle of it there in that super cool colour as well. But any, you know, anybody who noticed, pays attention to any of Blink's gear will notice that Tom has been playing a Fender Starcaster while on the road for Blink's new album. And finally, Fender have released a production model of this in quite a few colours, which is really, really cool. So we'll get into these guitars, we'll talk some specs. As always, we split up it, the video into chapters. So if you do want to just check the sounds, they will be in the timeline below and in the description. But let's just jump into some specs. I'll tell you what all these guitars are about. So much like the Stratocaster, the very famous Stratocaster, the Starcaster takes quite heavy inspiration from it. Obviously, it's that sort of mix of what he was playing in his 335 with the semi-hollow nature of the guitar, but then also the stripped down nature of the Strat as well by only having a singular pickup and a master volume on there as well. Kind of, you know, super suitable for punk and rock and actually even metal to a certain extent if you want to. But we'll get into that when I start breaking it down. So first of all, this guitar comes in four colours, much like his Stratocaster that came out, came in four colours. These are ever so slightly different. The one on my lap is the Satin Shell Pink version, which was my favourite, so I wanted to get that on my lap to start with. But also... There are four, oh not three, sorry, four in total colours. There is this satin Olympic white here with the black binding, black hardware. And actually, while I'm here as well, it's worth saying that they are all satin, which it does have a really, really nice feel to it. I think it's really cool as well. I think it makes the colours stand out just a little bit more. This is the surf green version as well. It's very classic kind of pulling in with the strat sort of connection there too. And then there is also this Shoreline Gold version as well, also in satin. This and the green have both got nickel hardware on them. And I'll break down just what goes into them in just a moment. But as I mentioned, the bodies, semi hollow nature like the Starcaster, but this kind of offset shape. Feels really good actually. For for me, I find that a 335 can sort of, it sort of overshadows me a little bit. It's, it feels massive when I'm playing it. Whereas this, it just kind of feels like a nice comfortable acoustic, which is good. Certainly it's not too bulky, it's not too big, and is actually like, because of the offset nature down there, it sits really nice, certainly for me anyway. But if we're looking into the specs of the guitar, the body here, it's got a center block, much like a 335. It's got your two F holes and the side bits are gonna be hollow there. This is made out of maple and it has a maple center block in there as well. Now, got bolt on design, much like a lot of other fenders. There's also, it's got the Tom DeLong 
signature just on the neck plate there, which is super cool. Now you'll notice on the back, just while we've got it turned around here as well, it's a roasted maple neck that is on this. It's a glossy neck that's on it, as opposed to the satin neck that was on the Stratocaster. Slightly different feel, but still feels really good. It's a very nice modern C shape as well, much like a lot of fenders. So anybody who's played, say, a modern Strat, modern Tele, anything like that, or even the uh, Tom DeLong Stratocaster as well, this will feel really good in your hands. Rosewood board on this guy as well, much like the Strat, with 22 medium jumbo frets as well. Now, that's actually quite easy to get up to the high end there as well, if you do plan on soloing on this. If you are just a you know, punk rock machine, then you're probably just gonna be playing a lot of power cards down this end as well, but just know that it does feel really good when you are up that top end there as well. Standard. 25 and a half inch scale length, much like all fenders, and this has got a 9.5 radius as well, which also just feels really nice to play. So no compound sort of radius over this guitar at all. It's just very uniform all the way through. Stripped down kind of fender headstock as well. And actually, looking at it while I'm here, they've both got the kind of oversized look to them, but I don't know, it might just be me that they kind of look a little bit different. Let me know in the comments. Aaron, what, what's, your, what's your opinion? Uh, I don't know. I think they are actually very the same. I think I'm just freaking out. That's probably what's happening. So differences aside, one of the other differences, well, I guess differences back at the forefront, because one of the other differences on these guitars is that they are equipped with locking tuners as well. These are just Fender locking tuners. They feel really, really good, really, really secure. And certainly after I got this guitar out and kind of stretched out the strings and made sure it was all fine, I've not found the tuning really moving that much. Now, um, as I mentioned, I'll just pull the Shoreline Gold one here as well, because that's got the nickel hardware on it, as opposed to the black that's on the pink and the Olympic white. That's kind of a personal preference for yourself. I do think they have matched the hardware to each respective color. I just think it's just like a like nice little touch as well that really just makes these guitars stand out that little bit. Now, moving on to the hardware and the electronics as well. Got tunomatic bridge, tunomatic bridge and a stop tail there. Nice and standard, nothing, nothing too crazy on there. As I mentioned as well, one master volume and one humbucking pickup in here. Now, unlike the Stratocaster, which had a Seymour Duncan Invader, which was proper old school sort of pickup that I mean, it's still in production, obviously, but it was the spec that Tom used previously, whereas what he's been using in his modern Starcasters and certainly any of the other modern guitars as well, this is a Seymour Duncan SH5, which you're still getting quite a lot of power out of it, but it's not so overtly in your face like the Invader, so you are able to get those kind of more subtler tones if you do need them and also it is equipped with the treble bleed as well on the master volume, which just means when you're on a distortion or anything, you start rolling that off, you're gonna still retain all your high end on there so you can really clean it up. But to give you a very quick listen to this singular pickup on our clean channel here. just while I'm here as well. I'll turn on just a little bit of crunch, not my full blown distortion. And I'll just, I'll play a couple of chords and then let you hear how the treble bleed actually kind of works into that too. <laughs> as much of that without getting sued as possible but that's kind of about it when it comes to these guitars there's very much the same sort of ethos as the Stratocaster 
don't don't want anything else getting in the way. You just want to be able to play on this thing and just do all the riffs, all the parts, all the Blink-182 stuff. That's what they're absolutely made for. So let's hear this. A couple of different sounds on this guitar. I'm going to be using a Freeman BOD for full-blown distortion. I'm going to throw some fuzz on there as well, just because I think it will sound really cool with the kind of semi-hollow thing. And maybe sacrilegiously, I might do some lead guitar on this as well, just so you can hear how it sounds. <laughs> gives you an idea of what can be done with the brand new Fender Tom DeLong Starcasters. Now, by all means, I don't think these guitars are so focused on just purely a Blink-182 fan or a Tom DeLong fan for that matter. They are really, really just quite eye-catching guitars that I think are really cool, and especially for anybody who just wants that super in-your-face sort of one pickup guitar, but not as in-your-face as that guy, then the Starcaster is one to have a look at. And it's also, for me anyway, I find it one of the coolest guitars in the Fender catalog, just because you don't really see that many of them. And there are quite, you know, quite a unique sort of instrument, especially when you see one on stage. But let me know what you think about the brand new Tom DeLonge Starcasters down in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed the video at all, leave us a like, leave, give us a subscribe. That would be very, very helpful for the channel and those algorithm gods will absolutely love it too. But until next time, I've been Kieran and these have been the brand new Fender Tom DeLonge Starcasters. Have a great day.